Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna to be addressing another very important question and that question is, what types of fabric do you need to sew swimwear? I'm gonna to try to make this video as concise as possible, but if you prefer to have it out in written form, that way you can take it to the fabric store or just have it as a resource, I do have a free PDF that's available in the description. So download that and then you can have all of my talking points all together. Alrighty, so swimwear fabrics. There's a lot of different stuff that you can get into. There's there's stretch, there's weight, there's a bunch of different colors and finishes, and some are softer than others, some are tougher and rougher, uh, some aren't really meant for swimwear at all. There's a lot of confusion in what qualifies as swimwear fabric, and it's very important to know that not you can't just make anything into swimwear fabric. So the best way to summarize what type of swimwear fabric you should get is get a fabric that is marked for swimwear. Most of the time this is going to be a nylon spandex and usually it'll be 80% nylon, 20% spandex. This is a pretty foolproof way to shop for fabric, especially if you're doing it online and you're not sure what it's going to end up being like. That being said, even within the nylon spandex category, there can be tons of differences with softness, with how like rough the fabric is or how stretchy or a bunch of different things. So there's still more things you need to consider, but nylon spandex is a good way to go. So the first thing to look for is stretch. Obviously swimmer needs to stretch. That's the whole thing that makes it unique is that it hugs your body really close and it needs to be able to move with your body. So stretch can come in a couple different ways. If you don't have stretch, do not buy the fabric. It is not meant for swimwear and it will be a disaster for you or your customers. Now, there are two types of stretches that you can find in swimwear fabric. First is two-way stretch and second is four-way stretch. Basically, the difference between these is how many ways can the fabric stretch. So two-way only stretches this way, say. And four-way can stretch this way, but it can also stretch this way. So four-way is the best fabric for swimwear, but you can definitely work with two-way. Most swimwear fabrics will come four-way, so you won't really come across too much two-way, but if you ever do, like one time I was doing this like slick, almost wet look swimsuit is a custom design, and it only came in two ways. So I had to like piece together and like make a bunch of different sections for the suit in order to make sure that it could stretch this way as well. But yeah, most of the time you're gonna be using four way and it comes usually standard with swimwear fabric and that is the safest way to go. Another common element to look for is it needs to be some sort of combination of wicking fabric. And this is so important. This is why you can't wear a cotton t-shirt in the pool. <laughs> oh, that's a disaster. That's why you're not supposed to use just any fabric for swimwear because it's not going to wick, it's not going to dry. That's why swimwear has its own fabric. And that's also why active wear has their own fabrics as well. A couple examples of wicking type materials to look for, spandex, nylon, uh, lycra, let's see, sometimes polyester. Um, it depends, but you do need to make sure it's not like 100% cotton. And another thing to note as I'm going through these common elements is that just because it's just because the fabric is wicking doesn't mean it's good for swimwear. For example, if it's wicking but it doesn't stretch pointless, or if it stretches but, um, and I'll get to this stuff later, if it stretches but it's just not meant for swimwear, it's not wicking. But the next common element, and I touched on this a little bit in the wicking part, and it needs to be listed as swimwear or active wear fabric. Now with active wear, I'm going to touch on this later, you need to be a little bit cautious about um, using any sort of active wear for swimmer because 
you, you can't really. So the exception is with the fabric that's used for volleyball shorts, which is an 80% nylon, 20% spandex material. So if a fabric is listed as swimwear fabric, you pretty much have the green light there. No problems, it's wicking, it's uh, stretchy, it's good for swimwear. So always look for that to start with. Now, if something's listed as activewear fabric, it could be used for swimwear, but it isn't always possible to use it as swimwear. And an example of an activewear fabric that you can't use for swimwear is like a polyester, like you know those Lululemon like V-neck t-shirts. Those are like a polyester nice fabric and they're wicking and they're stretchy. But in that case, it's gonna be too thin. And a lot of activewear fabrics are meant to um, like stretch and they have like a mesh in them. So if you're wearing a mesh swimsuit, I'll let you tell the end of that story. So again, if it's listed as swimwear, you have the green light. If it's listed as activewear, you're gonna need to look a little bit further, but sometimes you can use activewear fabrics for swimwear. So next, there are a few kind of words thrown around to describe these fabrics. One we're gonna to touch is moleskin, and that just basically means that the texture of it is rough. Um, it's a little bit higher pile of a spandex, and um, it's tougher, and it's used for more like performance type suits. Then the other description thrown around is called, okay, I'm trying not to butcher this pronunciation, called trico. And it looks like it's tricot, but I learned recently that it's actually the French word for knitting. It directly translates to knitting, which if that's wrong, let me know. Yeah, so it's like, it's a knit swimwear fabric. And this is typically what you'll come across. What I've noticed when I've ordered trico fabrics is that 99 times out of 100, they're perfect, they're great. A lot of my problems with the swimwear fabric I've ordered online is that it's not heavy enough. It doesn't feel good quality enough. And especially if you're going for lighter colors or prints and you don't want things to be see-through, it's good to go for a trico because that way you know for sure it is a knit, thick, good fabric. And I know a trico can come in shiny or matte finishes. Don't be con too concerned with that. That's more of a fashion and design choice. Um, but those are both available. All right, another common element. It's gonna have a higher spandex ratio. So let's take nylon spandex, for example. The nylon is gonna be 80% and the spandex is gonna be 20%, right? So if you increase the spandex, you're gonna have a tougher, stretchy, tough, thick fabric. If you increase the nylon, you're going to have a softer, thinner, more flexible fabric. So 80-20 is kind of that perfect harmony between having enough toughness to be swimwear, but still soft enough to um, be comfortable. And I haven't really seen spandex ratios above 20, but kind of off the top of my head, I would say don't go above 30 unless you're doing like wetsuits or something because that would get really thick and uncomfortable. And then the final common element is going to be the ingredients of the fabric. So I mentioned nylon, nylon spandex, and usually it's going to be a nylon, polyester, and sometimes a cotton blend. Basically it's going to be your nylon, polyester, or cotton combined with a spandex or lycra, which they're basically the same thing. Lycra is a actual like branded, <laughs> my dog. Lycra is an actual branded spandex and it's really not from what I know of different than spandex. It's just a brand that sells what's essentially spandex. So if you see lycra, that's good. It just means spandex, but don't think that because something doesn't have lycra that it's like cheaper. But yeah, they're one and the same. I sometimes use the terms interchangeably just because they are the exact same thing. So no need to get confused about that. So to reiterate, it's nylon, polyester, or cotton combined with a spandex slash lycra. 
Hey guys, so as I'm editing this video, I'm realizing that it's like 25 minutes and that's just gonna be too long. I'm gonna be talking for way too long. So I'm gonna split this video up probably into two or three uh, separate videos, but the PDF is still available in the description. And what I'll do is I'll divide up the PDFs per video. So this one will talk about um, the common elements in swimwear fabric. And then the next video, I'm gonna go talking about like some red flags when you're shopping for fabric. And then the third one is gonna be good shops that I recommend. So um, yeah, sorry for blabbering at you. It makes me uncomfortable to talk that much to a camera, but I hope it was helpful. Please comment below any questions you have so far. Some of them might be answered in the next videos, but if not, it would be super, super helpful if you commented the questions so that everybody else can see them. So thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next one. We are